Hello everyone, I'm Priyanka Anand. I work for Ericsson and I'm heading HR for Southeast Asia, Oceania and India. I have more than a decade of experience of working with Ericsson and overall two and a half decades of HR experience. It's been an interesting journey and here I am today looking forward to sharing with you a bit of my professional journey and my personal experiences. Eagerly looking forward to interacting with you and hearing more about your parts of the journey as well. Thank you. All right, that's a great question. And to me, my professional journey has been series of experiences that I've gained through multiple roles that I've been responsible for over my career. And to me, one of the biggest things that's been a, a backbone of how I've evolved my career is my values. And I've managed to keep my values, which I embraced while growing up, intact with me as I transitioned to my professional life. For values of integrity, honesty and respect, and my ability to speak up has been something that I've cherished as an individual and professionally being able to exercise that has been instrumental in who I am today. Like I said, it's, it's also a combination of the mindset and attitude that I embrace. And to me, my mindset clearly always tells me that nothing is impossible. And for me, challenges bring the best out of me. So as a professional, I would always say, dare to challenge yourself and believe that nothing is impossible. And most challenging roles always become the most rewarding and more ex most experiential in your professional journey and also personally most enthralling when we look back at what we accomplish as, uh, as these experiences come to, to life. The last thing I would say is it's a, it's a lot about creating an ecosystem around you and also believe in investing in relationships. So these are the two things I've really done incessantly, right? I've always, always believed in, believe in investing in relationships and this building lasting relationships. And one thing that has really been instrumental in that approach is being a fair combination of being empathetic yet driven in my leadership style. So I'm passionate about what we need to get done, but I also believe being human and empathetic makes a huge difference in going further at the right pace, but also getting the heart, soul and mind of your teams along with you and people along with you. And, and lastly, it's a lot about creating a safety net and an ecosystem that one can lean in. Because always remember, it's difficult to have both the glass balls up in the air and balance it seamlessly. So to me, having an ecosystem that, you know, at some stages of your professional life, that takes precedence and the personal has to take a backseat. And in some other instances, personal takes precedence and professional has to take a backseat. All that only happens seamlessly when we have an organization as well as a family that supports you so always believe in lean in and investing in that ecosystem. So to me, COVID-19 stands out as an instance where everybody was in the same storm, which is very unusual, unheard of across the globe seamlessly. But what was also evident the moment you scratched the surface was that each one of us was sitting in different boats. We were all dealing with different realities different challenges and different complexities. The only important thing that really stood out at that time was as an organization and as an HR leader, how do we create a safety net for our people? How do we as an organization activate our levers that will really help us go through this phase seamlessly? So we clearly believe in three things. Embracing a growth mindset was a journey we were on. We activated that in much more intensely. What we really believed was that instead of taking that as a disruptive phase of our evolution, we would take this as an opportunity. The whole situation was going to be transformed into how do we make the best of what was in front of us. And to make that happen, we invested in our leaders. And leaders were our, our, our single most strength in that whole situation. We invested in transforming our leaders into successful coaches as mentors and also get, got them to understand that being empathetic, human in their curated conversations with employees will make a huge difference. So our leaders did everything possible to build that safety net and have those curated conversations with our employees. 
And at the same time, we went back and reassured to our employees that we will continue to, to accelerate our journey of being adapt, adaptive, agile, and resilient as an organization and make every effort possible towards investing in their career growth, in their confidence buildup, and ensuring that every single effort is put towards their career evolution, while we also invest in their health, safety, and well-being. So to us, the retention has been one of our biggest strengths as an organization. And I dare not brag about it, but I clearly feel we are one of those few organizations that are proud of having life for the Ericsson, people who've not just spent decades, but generations at Ericsson. And that comes to us because of our much valued culture that we've continued to invest in and also hold strong to our ethos. And what we've done some years ago was really investing in building a people story, which is our people narrative, where we, we clearly go back and articulate it, you know, how people are at the heart of whatever we do. And at Ericsson, we see that people, when they're at the heart of whatever we do, also bring their best selves forward. What we also did as going one step further was to say, okay, as an organization, what will we do to make this journey more rewarding, more meaningful, and more memorable for our employees, right? In terms of investing in their career, growth, competence, in their personal journeys, mapping moments that matter. So building that whole narrative for our employees. At the same time, making it a deal because all this came with an expectation that we had towards our employees of what every single individual or every single employee will do for Ericsson towards ensuring that Ericsson succeeds, right? Towards our customer commitments, towards our technology leadership, towards our growth. So that deal and win-win partnership has been really truly reflecting in the culture we build. And that culture has become a bit of a glue to how we see employees believing in this journey, and even in the toughest parts of our evolution, because 145 years of existence, Ericsson has had peaks and turfs. But we've seen people believing and committing and staying with us even during the tough times with a clear thought that this is a phase and we will tide through this. And to me, that has become the whole narrative of how we see retention being our asset and how we deal with uh, attrition in a more proactive manner. I would say this is a clear priority for us and it's a non-negotiable with zero tolerance. So to me, it's really about how do we do everything that we can when it comes to being diverse, inclusive uh, company, which is high on integrity. What we also have been very clear about is that diversity to us comes much beyond just gender. It's gender, generational and nationality as well, right? So. So to us, this priority is very clearly articulated with the tone from the top, the right actions being taken in how we work and what we do, and how do we make conscious efforts, investments towards building more women in our workforce, right? What's very clear is that even with studies from World Economic Forum, women account for just 24% of corporate leadership roles, which clearly shows there's a lot more work to be done across the world, right? Across the spread and work that needs to be done in order to bridge the gap and also to become attractive for women to come and work for technology firms. But in our own uh, initiatives, we've, we've made one thing very clear, that we have, what gets measured gets delivered. So we have visible uh, communicated targets when it comes to gender diversity. We're also making a lot of investments towards women representation across, across technical, commercial and delivery roles. And we've had initiatives like investing in women at the middle of the pyramid, which clearly does a huge amount of good by building a cohort where, where women can support each other, talk to each other. But we also do a lot of external investment in, in, in our women leaders, right? So that we ready them for picking up senior roles because waiting for us to get women at the senior level from outside or natural progression internally would be too much to ask for. So we clearly identified this as an area of opportunity and invested in a program called Aspire, which clearly des is, is designed to support women in Ericsson who have interest in pursuing um, career pathways at the senior level or even in sales role in an accelerated manner. 
then we're also doing a lot of things towards uh, imbibing, you know, how we get women candidates at the bottom of the pyramid, which is when we get to the university hires, we target to get a big chunk of those hires from the universities as diversity um, with a diversity lens. So we get women candidates from, from that perspective. And then it comes to building an overall inclusive culture. We've, we've invested in employee resource groups, which is called Women at Ericsson. And we do everything possible to, to, to make it more uh, inclusive for women who work for us and who, women who we want to attract to come and work for us. So it continues to be an area of focus, like I said, and it's a priority. And we're continuing to drive it with an open talent market with the right uh, attitude and mindset with, it, with our hiring managers and with our leaders. some of the skills, then 5G, cloud, artificial intelligence, machine learning are some of the critical skill sets that we're looking for, which will stay ahead of the curve, which will be more forward looking of future skills. Um, and when it comes to new technology, these are the ones that are being introduced and, uh, and innovation is happening around these areas. But just to take a step back and look at the bigger picture, Given the adoption of 5G in different markets across the globe and also in India, which is standing at the brink of, of 5G, you know, our focus is not only on, on acquiring that competence from, from the external market, but we have made accelerated efforts towards upskilling and reskilling our existing workforce. So we create a combination of build and buy critical competence uh, so that we are, we are ready with the competence needs and competence uh, repository that will take us successfully through the future needs. So one good news, you know, while the world is talking about this extensively now, Ericsson has always been a big sponsor of hybrid working. And that is one of the reasons why if we were ahead of almost most of the other organizations to take a decision to work remotely overnight way back when the pandemic struck us, right? So to me, hybrid has been the way in which we work and remote working has been experimented extensively now over the last two and a half years. We will continue to start to make this more visible to our employees and to our leaders that hybrid is the way we will evolve in the future in a far more, uh, we are aiming for a hybrid model as a vision to create the balance between office and remote working. And to me, the bigger discussion is around keeping flexibility because that has become essential for employees and for us to be a progressive organization, not just to retain what we have, but also to attract the best talent from the industry. So when it comes to hybrid ways of working, we are making accelerated investments towards readying our leaders to effectively manage in the hybrid uh, ways of working, right? Where we make very clear messaging around how office is not a destination where you come to work. It's one of the places where you get to work from, while it could be remote from anywhere, anytime, flexible. And those messages are be being well articulated back to our employees, right? We believe the future of our work will be hybrid and it will be on the backbone of technology, which will be a game changer, as well as an enabler to effective uh, productivity of our employees. In fact, we are looking at work as an activity that is location agnostic and in short, flexible. And it's a decision that and a conversation that the employee takes with the manager and how they work, when they work and where they work from versus becoming a static uh, expectation from our side. So to us, this is the future and we will do everything possible to equip our leaders and our employees to be effective in the hybrid and remote ways of work. So my bigger message to the developers will be stay hungry, stay curious. It's all about challenging yourself and believing that nothing is impossible. Always remember to be more adaptable, curious, agile and capable of competing on a global stage because the world is becoming borderless now and what you wish and desire for is absolutely achievable provided you're ready to invest in yourself both in terms of hard skills which is the technical or functional skills as well as soft skills. 
which will be all about problem solving, flexibility, resilience, interpersonal skills. Because at the end, remember, your career is for you to make and you have to be the change you want to see. In this new economy, it's very clear that you have to be ready to pick on more challenges, be self-motivated and always believe in enhancing your skill set repository because the future is all about skill taxonomy. So constantly invest in your upskilling and reskilling. And remember that filling just one role is not going to define your career. It's all ab about being uh, ready for picking up diverse roles, looking at how skills can start to blend. How do you excel in what you do, but also start to invest in future skills, roles and, and technologies that keep you nimble enough and to also be ahead of the curve when it comes to addressing rapidly changing situations. So to me, I'll start with a big, a big picture, right? Ericsson has deployed 5G across 123 networks, and that's huge. It just happened all during the pandemic or just before the pandemic, right? That will give you a sense of how the momentum on 5G and other technologies is picking up. It's exponential, right? There's a huge demand for talent because there's an accelerated deployment that we're experiencing across the markets, right? Across the globe, in fact. And we are seeing different markets and different stages of 5G deployment uh, when we see uh, how the skill set demands are coming up. So to me, the adoption of new technologies like 5G, AI, cloud and automation are happening across networks, across operators, and therefore the requirement for skill sets across the markets is quite similar is both accelerated, high in demand, and you see a skewed demand versus supply. So everybody who's investing in both building and buying talent will have a way forward. And for the individuals being curious and investing in yourself will ensure that you have more opportunities um, to eye for.